Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay ko po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. Good day, Valenzuelano learners. I'm Sir A.C. Ardeza Jr. from Punturin Senior High School. I will be your live streaming teacher for today. Our topic is about the ways to address social inequalities. And here are the objectives for this lesson. First, evaluates factors causing social, political, and cultural change. And number two, advocate how human societies should adapt to such changes. We are all aware that inequalities can be found almost everywhere. Inequality is a major obstacle to a sustainable economic growth. Unlike poverty, which is a characteristic that can be defined at the individual level, inequality is a relational concept that refers to differences between individuals or groups and covers various dimensions. So before we proceed, let's have a short activity. Here is the instruction. Identify the word by guessing the jumbled letters. You will be given 10 seconds to think of the correct answer. Then type it in the comment section. First, a belief that race is a fundamental determinant of human traits and capacities and that racial differences produce an inherent superiority of a particular race. You have 10 seconds to answer the question. Clock runs out. Okay, the correct answer is racism. Well done. Next is an affair situation in which some people have more rights or better opportunities than other people. You have 10 seconds to answer the question. Time is up. Okay, the correct answer is inequality. Good job. Next is the behavioral, cultural, or psychological traits typically associated with one sex. You have 10 seconds to answer the question. Our time is up. Okay, the correct answer is gender. Good job. Next is a wage fixed by legal authority or by contract as the least that may be paid either to employed persons generally or a, to a particular category or employed persons. You have 10 seconds to answer the question. Time has run out. Okay, the correct answer is minimum wage. Good job. Next is, this is the abundance of valuable material possessions or resources. You have 10 seconds to answer the question. Okay, time is up. The correct answer is wealth. Good job. 
I hope you got it all right. And now, let's proceed to our main topic this morning, which is the ways to address social inequalities. Let us define first what is social inequality. Social inequality refers to differences in social outcomes, such as in education or employment, or to differences in social status or possession. Meaning, it's relational processes in society that have the effect of limiting or harming a group's social status, social class, and social circle. And by the way, social and economic inequality are strongly connected. In many parts of the world, Inequality remains a major concern. Areas of social inequality include access to voting rights, freedom of speech and assembly, the extent of property rights, and access to education, health care, quality housing, traveling, transportation, vacationing, and other social services and groups. Apart from that, it can also be seen in the quality of family and neighborhood life, occupation, job satisfaction, and access to credit. And here are some of the effects of social inequality. To begin with, first, the reasons for social inequality can vary but are often broad and far-reaching. Social inequality can emerge through a society's understanding of appropriate gender roles or through the prevalence of social stereotyping. Men should do this, while women should not do this, and such. Another is, social inequality can also be established through discriminatory legislation. Social inequalities exist between ethnic or religious groups, classes, and countries, making the concept of social inequality a global phenomenon. Lack of respect and tolerance is a major factor. So we must accept that each and every one of us is completely different and unique. Then social inequality is different from economic inequality, though the two are linked. Social inequality refers to disparities in the distribution of economic assets and income as well as between the overall quality of luxury of each person's existence within a society while economic inequality is caused by the unequal accumulation of wealth social inequality exists because of the lack of wealth in certain areas prohibits these people from obtaining the same housing health care etc as the wealthy in societies where access to these social goods depends on wealth another is social inequality is linked to racial inequality gender inequality, and wealth inequality. The way people behave socially through racist or sexist practices and other forms of discrimination tends to trickle down the effect of opportunities and wealthy individuals can generate for themselves. All of these effects primarily hit the people. Now let's proceed to another part of our discussion which tackles on the ways to address social inequalities. First, we have increased the minimum wage. The minimum wage has failed to keep up with inflation, failed to keep up with average wages. As a result, low-wage workers at NAR are benefiting from economic growth and productivity. When employers don't pay people enough to survive, those workers are compelled to seek government assistance, meaning taxpayers are essentially subsidizing the corporations. Second is expand the earned income tax. Expanding the earned income tax could provide financial security for millions. It is also gives low and moderate income workers a tax break. Third is build assets for working families. Asset building is how individuals, families, and communities gather the resources that will move them towards economic well-being for now and for years to come. It is simply increasing the amount of money or access to money that you have. This is done by acquiring things that have present or future monetary value. In general, the more assets that you acquire, the higher your net worth is. Fourth is invest in education. 
Investments in education and equity will increase student learning and graduation rates and in turn, secure our nation's economic future. Education is a long-term personal investment. Set new standards for your personal and professional life. Change your mindset from fixed to growth. Investment in self-education is the only investment that doesn't lose us its value over time. Fifth is end residential segregation. Residential segregation in the United States is the physical separation of two or more groups into different neighborhoods, a form of segregation that sorts population groups into various neighborhood contexts and shapes the living environment at the neighborhood level. The practice or policy of keeping people of different races religions, etc., separate from each other racial or religious segregation. They fought to end the segregation of public schools as well. By taxing progressively, respecting worker rights, and rethinking economics, we could make a great start at creating a more equal world. Extreme economic inequality is corrosive to our societies. It makes poverty reduction harder hurts our economies, and drives conflict and violence. Reversing this trend presents a significant challenge, but one we've seen some progress. Moving forward, here are the eight ways to move the world forward in reducing global inequality by Nick Galasso and Marjorie Wood. First, we have stop illicit outflows. In developing countries, inadequate resourcing for health Education, sanitation, and investments in the poorest citizens drives extreme inequality. One reason is tax avoidance and other illicit outflows of cash. According to Global Financial Integrity, developing countries lost $6.6 trillion in illicit financial flows from 2003 to 2012, with illicit outflows increasing at an average rate of 9.4% per year. That's $6.6 .6 trillion that could reduce poverty and inequality through investments in human capital, infrastructures, and economic growth. Second is progressive income tax. After falling for much of the 20th century, inequality is worsening in rich countries today. The top 1% is not only capturing larger shares of national income, but tax rates on the highest incomes have also dropped. How much should the highest income earners be taxed? This is obviously a question to be decided domestically by citizens, and opinions differ. For instance, economist Tony Addison suggests a top rate of 65% rate on the top 1% of incomes. Third, we have a global wealth tax. In Capital in the 21st Century, Thomas Piketty recommends an international agreement establishing a wealth tax. Under his plan, countries would agree to tax personal assets of all kinds at graduated rates. The skeptics do have a point about whether this particular plan is practical, but we shouldn't give up on the idea. Because wealth tends to accumulate over generations, fair and well-designed wealth taxes would go a long way towards combating extreme inequality. Fourth, we have enforce a living wage. Governments should establish and enforce a national living wage, and corporations should also prioritize a living wage for their workers and with the suppliers, buyers, and others with whom they do business. Low and unlivable wages are a result of worker disempowerment and concentration of wealth at the top, hallmarks of unequal societies. As human beings with basic needs, all workers should earn enough to support themselves and their families. Governments and corporations should be responsible for protecting the rights to a living wage. Corporations should commit to responsible behavior that respects the dignity of all workers. Fifth, we have workers' right to organize. 
the right of workers to organize has always been a cornerstone of more equal societies and should be prioritized and protected whether this basic right is violated. Extreme inequality requires the disempowerment of workers. Therefore, the right of workers to organize and bargain collectively for better pay and conditions is a global human rights priority. Despite Article 23 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which declares the right of organize as a fundamental human right, workers worldwide, including in the United States, still face intimidation, fear, and retribution for attempting to organize collectively. Where unions are strong, wages are higher, and inequality is lower. Sixth, we have stop other labor abuses. Companies worldwide are also replacing what was once permanent and stable employment with temporary and contingent labor. Often called contingent or precarious workers, these workers fill a labor need that is permanent while being denied the status of employment. In the United States, this trend is called misclassification in which employers misclassify workers as independent contractors when they are actually employees. Contingent labor also occurs through outsourcing, subcontracting, and use of employment agencies. Seventh is open and democratic trade policy. Negotiating international trade agreements behind closed doors with only bureaucrats and corporate lobbyists percent has to end. These old-style trade agreements are fundamentally undemocratic and put corporate profits above workers, the environment, health, and the public interests. We need a new transparent trade policies that is open, transparent, and accountable to the people. Eighth is a new economics. Economists are often imagined as stuffy economic, academic who value art and economic theory above humanitarian values. The fields clinging to parsimonious theories gave us such winners as the Washington Consensus and a global financial system that imploded in 2008. Thankfully, there is a movement among economics graduate students and scholars to reimagine the discipline. As they acknowledge, we clearly need a new economics that works to improve the lives of everyone, not just those already well off. For instance, what could be more radical than a Buddhist economics? This is the path promoted by economist and Rhodes scholar E.F. Schumacher, who says humanity needs an economics that creates wealth for all people, just not for money, for privileged people and corporations. Economics should take into account ethics and the environment and treat its claim less like invariable truth. And this is the end of our discussion. To make sure that you learn the topic discussed today, let us answer this activity. For our instruction, write the word true if the statement is correct and write false if it says otherwise. You may write your answer at the comment section. You will be given five seconds to answer each question. Are you ready? Let's begin. Investments in education and equity will increase student learning and graduation rates and in turn secure our nation's economic future. You have five seconds to answer the question. Clack runs out. Okay, the correct answer is true. Well done. Next is social inequality is the same as economic inequality. You have five seconds to answer the question. Time is up. Okay, the correct answer is false. Again, social inequality refers to disparities in the distribution of economic assets and income, as well as between the overall quality and luxury of each person's existence within a society. While economic inequality 
is caused by the unequal accumulation of wealth. Well done. Next is, social inequality refers to differences in social outcomes, such as in education or employment, or to differences in social status or possession. You have five seconds to answer the question. Time is up. Okay, the correct answer is true. Good job. Next is, social inequality is linked to racial inequality, gender inequality, and wealth inequality. You have five seconds to answer the question. Time is up. Okay, the correct answer is true. Good job. Next is, residential segregation is the physical separation of two or more groups into different neighborhoods. You have five seconds to answer the question. Clock runs out. Okay, the correct answer is true. Good job, everyone. So that would be the end of our discussion for today. Should you have any questions, you may clarify this to your subject teacher. Again, I'm Sir AC Ardeza Jr. from Punturen Senior High School. Goodbye and God bless us all.